Thinking about your retirement but confused about all the different options out there? Whether you're 20, 35, or 50, properly preparing for your retirement is crucial. Join us today as we talk about some of these funds and the benefits that they provide. Let's go. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Evan, a real estate agent and mortgage broker. Saving for your retirement may seem like something you should consider 10, 20 years from now, but in reality, you should consider it now. When you retire, you're gonna be heavenly reliant on your retirement fund or funds, so choosing the right one now and contributing to it will greatly benefit you in the future. One of the retirement accounts that many people are familiar with is the traditional 401k. This is an employer-sponsored retirement account, meaning that you and your employer can actually contribute to it. All of your contributions that you make are taken out of your paycheck before income tax is applied, meaning you actually get some tax savings from it. Many companies offer 401k matching, meaning your employer can match a certain percentage of your contribution up to a specified amount. Another thing to know is that 401k contributions are tax deferred, meaning that you are not taxed on your earnings or contributions until after you withdraw your money. As of 2023, you can contribute to a max of $22,500 to your 401k. However, if you are 50 or older, you can contribute up to $30,000 into your 401k every year. The IRS allows you to withdraw money penalty-free from your 401k at 59 and a half years old and requires withdrawals at 72 years old. Uh, you're allowed to take money out of your 401k early, uh, but it will be subject to income tax and a 10% penalty for early withdrawal. I strongly discourage taking money out of your 401k early unless it's for an emergency. Any money taken out cannot be put back in and it permanently decreases your portfolio's balance. The money inside of your 401k can be invested in bonds, stocks, mutual funds, and more. But in the end, it really is dependent on your risk tolerance and what your financial goals for your portfolio are. Another thing to note that if you actually change employers, your 401k can be rolled over to your new employer or into an IRA, which we're about to get to right now. A traditional IRA is an individual retirement savings account, meaning that it is not connected to your employer, so it's just you contributing to it. It is also very common for people to have both a 401k and an IRA. Contributing to your IRA also comes with tax benefits. You can deduct the money that you contribute to your IRA from your taxable income, lowering your taxes. And also the max you can contribute is 6,500 a year in 2023, but if you're older than 50, you can contribute $7,500 a year. Like a 401k, all contributions and earnings in an IRA are tax deferred, so you will not pay taxes until you withdraw your money. Also like a 401k, the IRS allows you to withdraw money from it penalty-free at 59 and a half years old and requires it at 72 years old. You are again allowed to withdraw money early, but it will be subject to income tax and a 10% penalty for early withdrawal. I again strongly discourage taking money out of it early unless it's an emergency. In your IRA, you're allowed to invest in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and more. What you invest in specifically depends on your risk tolerance and what your goals are for your portfolio. You're also allowed to roll over your IRA, but you have to follow some specific guidelines. Another option I strongly suggest people considering is a Roth IRA. It is basically the same as a traditional IRA with a few key differences. The biggest difference is that contributions to a Roth IRA are after-tax dollars, so your money grows tax-free inside your portfolio, and when you withdraw, you pay no taxes. Uh, there are no current year tax benefits as it is post-tax money, and that there is an income limit for Roth IRAs. So for 2023, if you file your taxes as a single individual, your modified adjusted gross income must be under $153,000. And if you are married and file jointly, your Maggie must be under $214,000. So what is your Maggie? Well, according to H&R Block, it is your adjusted gross income plus a few items like exempt or excluded income and certain deductions. I'll be attaching a link to the article down below. And lastly, Roth IRAs don't require withdrawals, at least during the original owner's life. An SCP or Simplified Employee Pension IRA is a retirement account where the employer can contribute to the employees and their own retirement savings account. Now, this is typically used by self-employed individuals or by small businesses. I know many real estate agents who have SEP IRAs. Now, since they are independent contractors, they can set up a business where they are the employer and sole employee. 
This is great because with an SEP IRA, whatever you contribute to one employee's retirement fund, you have to contribute to all of their retirement funds. According to the IRS, the contributions you can make to each employee's SEP IRA each year cannot exceed the lesser of 25% of the compensation or $66,000 for 2023. Other things to note about the SEP IRA is that contributions made by the employer are tax deductible and that earnings within the fund are tax deferred until withdrawn. The funds are known for their simple paperwork and filing and that employees are eligible if they are 21 plus and have worked for the employer in a minimum of three of the last five years. They must also have earned a minimum amount, which is determined by the employer. And lastly, the 403B, which is mainly used by nonprofits and other tax exempt organizations. The fund is pretty much like a 401k. However, uh, if you've been at this organization for over 15 years, you're allowed to contribute 3000 extra more dollars a year but this can vary between different organizations. And yeah, that's basically it. Those are the main retirement fund accounts that people consider. Uh, I personally think the Roth IRA is the best option uh, because it allows your money to grow tax-free. It's also the first one that I opened when I was 20 and I've con tried to contribute to it, the max at least, every single year. Uh, there are also other accounts out there. So if you want me to cover them, let me know down in the comments below. And until then, Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, then click the video here. Also, if you haven't, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos.